All right, folks, uh, welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. On this, vi this video, most likely will not be all that long. Basically, on this video, I'm just going to be driving through uh, some of the neighborhoods that I believe are either in or they're surrounding the historic districts, the historic district of Evansville, Indiana. I mean, whenever I do videos of this type of city, I like to drive around some of the older communities to where you got houses that were built. in the 1800s that for the most part people have either a they kept them up over the years or b they purchased them and then they rent and then they did a lot of renovations to them so i like to yeah right now i'm driving down powell street here in evansville i mean you know this this community I'm going to be driving through, I mean, it's it's right by downtown Evansville. I don't know exactly where the historic community in Evansville is located. I'm pretty sure I'm going to drive into it at some point. I got it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, a lot of these houses look like have either been recently renovated. Some of them look like they're undergoing renovation. See, see, like I told you guys before, for those of you, I mean, like I told you guys before, me personally, personally, if I wanted a real big house in the city limits, I'd rather take one of these historic houses, fix them up, as opposed to find something newer. Because a lot of these older houses are built so much better. The workmanship, the, the, the quality of the material are so much better than the way they build newer houses. And when you look at a lot of your newer houses, a lot of them are built in subdivisions to where your yard is not all that big anyway. And in some of your newer subdivisions, you have to pay an association fee. Now, I would say that the, the major drawback of living in a dist of living in a historic district like this one is a lot of times in a historic district, you may have to, I mean, there's like specific uh, building requirements that many of your historic districts are gonna have. Like if you do something as simple as paint in your home, your paint has to be a certain color. 
or if you want to make an addition to your home, your addition can't be bigger than a certain amount of square footage. So there's there's a lot of I mean there's a lot of in my opinion what I would call uh, silly requirements that your house has to meet or requirements that you have to adhere to when doing a home renovation to a house in a historic district of any city. So. FYI, if you're wanting to live in a historic district, bear in mind that the cost to renovate a home is could oftentimes be more expensive than renovating a home in any other type of a community uh, simply because in a historic district, there's going to be specific requirements and regulations that you're going to have to adhere to. Like, if you want to paint your house, your paint has to be of a certain color. If you want to add to your house, you, you can only add, I mean, you, you know, the, the square footage would have to be, you, I mean, you might have a limit of a certain square footage. Like, if you want to make an addition, you can't, I mean, your addition has to be a certain square footage or smaller or something like, something ridiculous. See, so yeah, that's one thing. That's one major down in living in a historic district are some of the requirements that you might have to adhere to if you choose to renovate a historic house. I mean, a house in a historic district. I mean, the experience of renovating one of these type of houses could be rewarding and exciting for many of you that are watching this video, along with tedious and very expensive. But at the end of the day, the results could be rewarding. You know, you get to, you know, Every day you get to look at the work that you did. Every day you can pat yourself on the back. I guess. I mean, I'm just mumbling. I'm not making no damn sense. I apologize. Like I said, some of these houses, I mean, I can, you know, some of these houses look like they're in the historic community. Some of them are just right outside the community. I mean, 
some of these streets, I mean, you got so many cars parked out in the street that it's harder for you guys to see the actual house. There's some very nice houses around here too. Very nice houses. Nice and massive. Yeah, I would say if you wanted to grab one of these houses up, I would say the average price of a house around this area that's fixed up, turnkey movement ready, will probably run I mean, off the top of my head, I would say one of these houses will run at least $300,000. At least three hundred, dollars If not more than that. Now, once again, me personally, this type of living is not my cup of tea. I mean, I prefer to have a little bit more space between my between me and my neighbors and I prefer to have an actual driveway to park my vehicle but there's a lot of people that enjoy this urban living they enjoy living in these historic communities with all these beautiful houses I mean, these houses have a ton of character. I mean, it's amazing how much character that builders back in the day used to put in houses when they built houses. And this, and, and, and of course, these houses were built long before any type of machinery. I mean, these houses, of course, were built long before any type of machinery. But then we look at the houses that are being built today. I mean, despite the technology we have, despite all the different machines we have, Still, a lot of the houses that are built today are, in my opinion, garbage.
Alright folks, in a couple of minutes or so, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I think you guys get the idea. I, I, I think you guys get the idea of what this video was about. I mean, I was just trying to try through some of the older communities here in Evansville. As you guys can see, uh, certain parts of this community are in better shape than other parts. Now the parts of this community that are not in such good condition, that may have historic homes on them. I mean, for those of you that are willing to roll the dice and gamble a little bit with the, with the way that those neighborhoods are gonna go in the future, you can always buy some of those houses for pennies on a dollar. Just bear in mind that since a lot of these houses are bigger, you're gonna have to spend a substantial amount of money on renovations. All right, folks, I'm gonna end it right here. Uh, thanks for watching and everybody have a blessed one.